Hey there! In the last video I showed you how to make a grapple gun in Godot, but I didn't go into UV mapping, so let's take a look at that in this one. The code I'll be using is from that specific video, and I'm only going to be building up on it and fixing some errors. Last time we had our rope mesh done, but there was no texture and that's where UV maps come into play. You can think of UV maps as a way to store texture data for your mesh. Imagine taking a cube and rolling it out side after side. You might end up with a shape like this one. Basically, you go from 3D space into 2D and that's the mapping process. Like you take the U and V coordinate on a 2D texture and just wrap it around your 3D mesh like a Christmas present. Just imagine X is U and Y is V, basically. How can we wrap our rope mesh then? For starters, I'll be using this texture. And for the sake of debugging, I'll mark the sides in top, right, bottom, and left. Since the texture is tiled, I would also like to make it so that the texture wraps around the rope one time in width. We can simplify the rope into a circle, and the width of the texture will be equal to our circumference. Once we have that, and we know the ratio of the texture dimensions, we can get the length of one of the texture tile and height. In this case, the texture has the resolution of 2048 by 1024. So the ratio is 1 half or 0.5. The V coordinate of the UV map is quite simple. All we need is the distance from the end of the rope, aka the hook position, to the current center vector. Then we just need to divide it by the amount we calculated using our circumference. The reason for using the end of the rope and not the start, which is player position, is that in Godot, top left corner is 0, 0, and bottom right is 1, 1 for your UV maps. The U coordinate is a bit trickier, but nothing too difficult. We're just going to take a current angle of our vertex in radians and just divide it by 2 pi, which is the angle of the entire circle or 360 degrees. This will always result in a number between 0 and 1 inclusively. Of course, in our case, we won't get the value of 1 because of the way we set up the for loop. Before I show you how to add the UV coordinates to your vertices, I'd like to remind you of the order in which we store the indices we then use for constructing the immediate mesh. It's always done in trios like so. The reason why we need to keep this in mind is that there are vertices that are going to share the same position, but we'll need to have the U coordinate either set to 0 or 1. This will happen exactly at the last two iterations for every segment. Imagine a triangle shape rope. The rope has three sides and every side has two faces. So six iterations all together. On the second to last iteration, you just want to change the UV coordinate of the third vertex in the trio to one. On the last iteration, you can change both the first and the third vertex to one. These UV coordinates had the value of zero before. To assign the UV coordinates to the mesh, just use surface set UV function. This will already work great for any texture you might have that will not use the UV2 texture data. Basically at this point you can use normal maps or displacement maps. And here is where I ran into issues and I didn't manage to figure out a way how to fix them manually. Even though I assume that the UV should be the same values as UV1, for some reason it doesn't work. What does work however is triplanar mapping. But yeah, I'd still like to know where I'm making an error with manual assignment. And if you do, let me know. But anyways, that's how we make a real-time rope grappling gun mesh in Godot 4 with texture. If you have any topics you'd like me to cover in future videos, let me know down in the comments. If you're interested in implementing Jetpack in Godot 4, watch the video in the top right. Also, if you like my videos, I'd be grateful if you subscribe. But that is everything for me, so thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.